Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. And good morning. Welcome to today. It's a race is presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stanton Salter, along with our odds maker, Keith Fuster. We'll tell you about all the action we have going on this afternoon for you, including that nice carryover in the Rainbow Pick 6. That's almost 11,000. That starts race four. We'll get to that. But first, let's recap that popular national wager yesterday. There it is, the Stronic 5. I couldn't do it three weeks in a row, give out a winning on-air ticket, uh, my, uh, my on-air ticket. It was a $96 play. It was four out of five. My single and leg D at Golden Gate. The Hollendorfer horse did, did not run very well at all. That turned out <coughs> to be a tough race to handicap. There's your payout. Uh, uh, over 2000 Now, the, the, the leg A was a three to here at Laurel Park. Was the, the, the Wayne Potts horse, three to one. That horse paid $8. Uh, the second leg at Gulfstream, nine to five favored, paid five sixty. The third leg at Gulfstream, seven or two, uh, seven or two of the worst was second choice, I think. Nine dollar win price. That was your biggest win price on the ticket. Wow. Then leg D, you had a five to two. Of, of uh, that horse ended up going off the favorite, eight to one morning line okay. in leg D. Went off five to two favorite, paid seven eighty. And then the finale, you had the creep go off your seven to five favorite. That horse paid four sixty. If my math is correct, I estimated here. The win parlay was around $897. I, I didn't hit it with my on-air ticket. I, my single ran off. I gave out a bad single, but it was Hollendorfer, for a good 7-2 yeah, price. Yeah. Uh, on a, a bigger ticket that I played with some, some a bunch of friends gave me some money. We played a bigger ticket. And you're right, leg D was uh, awfully mm -hmm. tricky. We ended up hitting the all button there, and the horse that won was like one of the last horses we threw in. Yeah. That horse was eight to one morning yeah. line, yeah. went off five to two, and yeah. maybe that's why he had such a big payout in the uh, the the Stronic Five yesterday. They put they bet almost two hundred and fifty nine thousand into it once again. That's two weeks in a row. It's been over two hundred and fifty thousand, and a big payout there over two thousand. That's the challenge, you know, when you're stepping in for a dollar base wager like that. Five races couple of them. Our, our, our opening leg here, uh, that was kind of wide open. Bigger but field. I know you like the horse in there at 12 to 1 right. morning line that came running late, I think ran fourth. So I, I, I think you have to spread there. You have to pick your poison. So sometimes people just find a spot. They, they leave something off. And in that race at Golden Gate, that 8-1, to one, so D, eight, yeah. yeah, the 8-1, the one, you know, morning line, but it showed how competitive. Yeah, that, that race, they almost all look the same to me. So it, it forced a lot of players probably to take a little bit more. They got some. They, they got scared as they got deeper in the ticket. They cut a little bit. There you go. And once again, a solid payout for the Stronic Five. Yeah, you gotta uh, love the bet. Yeah, dollar minimum play. So it's a little mm -hmm. harder to hit, but when you hit it, it pays well. Even if you just have the favorites with yes. a nine a nine dollar winner was the biggest uh, winner mm -hmm. on that Stronic Five yesterday. So that was uh, yesterday. We'll look forward to to the Stronic Five once again next Friday. Hopefully, we'll kick it off here. At Laurel Park, big action today. Though let's get well. You uh, you you gave out the the winning early pick four ticket yeah. yesterday, and uh, had had some nice winners on top. Decent yesterday. little profit, okay profit. We're just trying trying to get some for a little bit more value. Uh, yeah, we've got a pretty good little run with the early pick fours. Uh, hopefully, you can take what you got yesterday and reinvest in today's ticket. So. Yep. Yeah, today's car is not bad. A tricky little car. but uh, right. The late pick five. Yeah. I, I have a single on my early pick five. Couldn't find a single on the late pick five. Mm -hmm. You have that maiden 10, yeah. which is wide open, right. and the nickel two life. The finale is wide open. Let's uh, mm -hmm. let's show you our carryover, though. And we had a live – we had a live uh, – we, so we had three yeah. live singles going into the last uh, leg yesterday for, for a big score. And there's mm -hmm. the carryover today in the 20-cent rainbow pick six. Almost 11,000. All right, that's going to start race four on the nine race program. My co-host in the afternoon, Tim Tullock, he'll have a ticket. Okay. We'll show you that ticket when we get to race four 
also a week from today. Sign up for this now. Registration's now open. It's filling up fast. The always popular Champions Handicapping Tournament. This is one of the biggest handicapping tournaments of the year right here at Laurel Park in the beautiful sports bar next Saturday, March 16th. Over 33000 and prizes. It's also a qualifying tournament for one of the big ones, uh, the National Handicap and Championship, the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge, the big one. Go to laurelpark.com for details. We're going to have a, a monster Saturday yep. next Saturday, the Handicap and Tournament, a, a big stake Saturday, the private terms with always mining, uh, mm -hmm. looking to keep on uh, reeling right. off the wins in there for uh, connections, uh, the Elkstone Group and trainer Kelly Rubley. Doing the right thing, staying here at home. Yep. Hey, if it ain't broke, you know, you don't have to fix it. But I tell you, yeah, and talking about that Champions Tournament real quick, you know, it, it brings guys out of retirement. One of my right. degenerate friends I, who I thought fell off the face of the earth wasn't playing anymore. Right. I get a call. Oh, yeah, you know, I said, Study you asking me about some races. I said, I, th I thought you're done. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. He says, I, I got to get ready. I'm back for the tournament next week. All right. Yeah. And, we'll, and we'll have a bunch of great <laughs> college basketball going yeah. on every weekend in March. You can watch all the college basketball up there in the sports book on that 75-foot LED wall. The mm -hmm. Cure the Winter Blues Handicapping Tournament, that continues to roll on. You have uh, weekly prizes, grand prize, $10 entry fee. Races in the contest today, Laurel Park races 5 through 9, and Gulfstream Park races 7 and 9 mm -hmm. today for the Cure the Winter Blues Handicapping Tournament. All right, let's show you a okay. picture of the main track. We had a little snow come in yesterday yes, afternoon. Did. I think that just tightened everything up. There's a there's a track, a beautiful, yep. fair play and fast track. It was. You saw them pretty much from anywhere. Speed was all right. You could close inside, outside. Really didn't matter on that track yesterday. Uh, today, there's your weather. 40s, partly sunny. Supposed to get up, what I hear, close to 60? Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And and today. And, yeah. Today and tomorrow. Maybe. And a big thing tomorrow, post time goes to 110, 110 tomorrow. 110. Right. right? So 110 got, tomorrow. Yeah. yeah so you, uh, you change the, the clocks the, tonight, right? Yeah, an hour forward uh, tonight for spring. All right. All right, here we go. Race one, my best bet of the day is in the opener here. Okay. We're going to kick off the the rolling super high five with the, with that low 15% takeout on the super high five. There's the carryover, mm -hmm. a little shy of 2,000 for the opener. Also, race one kicks off that popular early pick five. It's a mandatory payout on the early pick five with an industry low 12% takeout. I have a ticket. Let's take a look. $32 play. My best bet is in the opener. Right. Nice beat and nickel going two turns. I'm going to single on my best bet of the day. Hopefully this single a little better than that Hollandor for stiff. I gave out yesterday. <laughs> Hollandor for that guy's a bum. He, need, he needs to win some races. My God, horse didn't hit the board. <laughs> Ran awful. That's all right. I, I like Hollandor for nice guy. Good trainer. Here we go with the seven, Dazzlin' Oki. There's my ticket, the seven, Dazzlin' Oki. Going to be my best bet today, my single. Uh, so I'll use that horse in the opener. Then four deep in race two with the two, four, five, six. Then the third race, I go with the one, six there. And then uh, race four, I go with the six, ten. And a nice allowance race in race five to wrap up this early pick five, going six furlongs. I go four deep with the one, two, seven, eight. So a $32 ticket for the early pick five. Let's take a look here right. at the opener. Mile on the 16th, claiming 5,000, four and up. Haven't won two races in six months, never won five. We have a stat to show you mm -hmm. on my top pick here, the seven, Dazzlin' Oki. Here's the stat for Trainer Kieran McGee. Yeah, over the last couple of years at Laurel, 12 for 33 with the $5,000 dirt routers. How about that? 36% with a positive ROI. Might have just, I think he had one yesterday, didn't run too well, but still right around 35, 36% with a positive ROI. And Dazzling Oki, you know, they claimed him, reclaimed for 12-5, and, and maybe just didn't, weren't able to find the, the spots that they really wanted, Stan. And we find that now back, finally gets back to a condition race, gets the two in six months. And if Dazzling Oki brings anything close uh, to his, a minus game. I think he can go ahead and sit somewhere in mid pack and get on by these. There's some speed in here. Uh, I think battle ready. Back to a condition is going to take him a long way, but he'll he'll get pressure from Causey's Western. Even maybe a long shot to the stars will be forward, forcing the pace. But uh, dazzling Oki, uh, the nine year old now for Bob Beck. You know, a, a fan favorite, a barn favorite. I'm sure. Sure. Uh, I think. <laughs> can get back on the winning track. Uh, a second. considerable class, really, yeah. dropping from them starter allowance, open 12-5, so a nice, cozy, 
beaten nickel spot. You get the leading rider, Trevor McCarthy, should get a nice trouble-free trip. He'll he'll be maybe two, three wide going into that first turn. That's fine. He'll be sitting about mid-pack or stalking trip. So we both have the seven on top. I do use the uh, the two battle ready in my yeah. exact Angel Suarez aboard for Jamie Ness. Been running against Open Nickel Company. Finds a beaten nickel spot today. To, and he's been running okay. Decent third last yeah. out against Open Nickel up there at Parks. Yeah, a little bit in and out with the numbers, you know, bouncing back and forth, you know, high 50s, mid 60s, in that range. Yeah, I, I worry about the last 16th of a mile, last eighth of a mile with Battle Ready. Because Cosby Swetzer is pretty quick in his own right, going long. He's got that speed. He's going to stretch back out off of the seven for a long race. I think they're going to be going okay up front. And uh, Dashling Oki, he's, he's got positional speeds uh, definitely against this kind of group. Uh, he'll, he'll make a run into it. Uh, Mucho Muscrandi was used early last time, I think, from the eight post. Just drop over early. Let let the pace go. Settle and try to make one run. That's going to be his best chance. And Chief Tari, I think, will just lay inside the whole way and pick up a piece. All right, so it's all the seven. Dazzling Oki, hopefully, in the opener. Let's turn the page here. You've been on a roll with the early pick fours. They start in race two. You have a ticket today. Let's check it out, see how you played it. Yeah, $24 ticket, not terribly expensive. Four or five to get you started. Crush it for Mary and Gringo Star. So four or five there in race two. Race three, the five and the seven. I'm going to go against the droppers, the two inside horses. Awesome agenda and broker's reward dropping down in class. Major drops. I'm going to try to get past those. Fourth race, two, six, and ten. I like Greeley Strike. A little price for Valora Testament. She owes you no money, there you right? Go. That there's uh -huh. gold. Huh? And the fifth race, one, two, six, seven. Highly competitive group there. A other than strong A other than in race five. All right, let's take a look here at the second race. We're going seven furlongs, claiming 16,000, three and up. Never won three or straight three year olds. That's the condition here. Uh, let's start. With the video spotlight of the five here, the five Gringo Star 702 morning line. Here's his race from February 7th at Laurel. Yeah, first off the claim and, uh, and reached and grabbed this horse off of Claudio. A uh, little bit step slow there out of the gate. This horse moves up into, uh, a, you know, like, what is it, four or five of them, six of them while going for the lead. And, and Gringo Star was keen. He was doing it, moving up well in hand, but unfortunately has to steady back out of here, almost check. As the leader, my eminence goes on with it up on the front end. And drafts back, Stan, probably loses when you talk about it from the four-and-a-half pole up into the half-mile pole, probably two to three lengths. Still under a guzzle hole, crying out for run, but absolutely nowhere to go for Gringo Star. Now we're going to pick it back up, drop some six, seven lengths out of it, maybe eight out of it around the turn, shifts out, and look at this. This finish is strong. I like this finish. When my eminence was able to kind of dictate up front, Gringo Star. Right on the correct lead there, past the 16th pole, gained some ground about almost three lengths to the final eighth of a mile. This horse, we saw the positional speed, had to check out of it, draws outside today. Uh, I, I think is going to be forward stalking and maybe uh, going on by Zip Van Winkle with some speed. Maybe some speed Port Louis is fresh uh, for, for, for Michael Merriman. But I, I like Green Ghost Star back for a barn and can basically do no wrong right now on the nightcap yesterday. Yeah, yeah, Pazza, nice win yesterday. So I like the five, Gringo Star. He'll be right there. The two I have on top, we like the same four here. Uh -huh. And the second, yeah. the two, Zip Van Winkle for trainer Hugh McMahon. A decent third against 25,000. Three life going two turns late December up there at Penn National. Winner of that race comes right back to win. So that was a strong race. And then faced a uh, tougher starter handicap horses early February here at Laurel. And then... Uh, a, a tougher starter allowance uh, group last out going two turns. We cut back to seven furlongs today. This horse won going seven furlongs at Churchill last November with a big 68 buyer. He ran a 74 buyer, two back. So I think the two zip Van Winkle sitting on a big race. He's getting a yeah. class relief today. He is. He's getting, getting you know, he's, he's shortening up a little bit. He's got that stamina build up. But, I mean, he, he could get pressured here. I just don't know if he's going to be able to kind of get the entire distance. Maybe he can dog it out. I think Port Louis is fresh. I think he's going to force the issue, but crush it uh, for Mary. The inside wasn't great on the 8th of February. And this horse is down inside pretty much the whole way, made a move, and just couldn't sustain. She's pretty good on these little subtle droppers, Mary Epler. coming. Up. This horse has got the numbers, two back, three back try. Puts this horse right in the mix. I think this horse is going to stalk and make a move. Uh, Gringo Star, though, top selection. Wayne Potts with another little stat. He's three for 11 and seven for 11 in the money. Second off the claim with these mid-level claimers over the last year or two. 
Okay, yeah. so we like the same mm -hmm. four horses there in race two. Let's turn the page here. Race three, we're going a flat mile. Maiden claiming 16,003 and up here in race three. And uh, a big scratch of the morning line yeah. favorite here in the third, the four, Grand Oasis, who was eight to five, scratched. He's gone. I have the six on top. Then America's Prince I, I, I end up with on top. This uh, a white thoroughbred by Honorable Dylan ran a decent race first off to claim last out for trainer Dale Capuano. Dale had to give him a, a few months off after he claimed him for 16,000, dropped him to the maiden 10, first time Lasix, first time Blinkers, and he ran a lifetime best uh, effort. He was a little unruly at the gate. Uh, uh, Dale does his homework in the morning. He he doesn't miss any uh, doesn't miss anything. So I'm sure he's probably taken the horse back to the gate and schooled him. He's uh, he had a couple of works since that uh, that that first race for Dale last out. Uh, Weston Hamilton back aboard. I like the I like the six America's yeah. Prince. I think an improving horse for Dale Capuano. Yeah, the question there was why drop off the claim, right. uh, but you know had a bad number off of that race December the first. A little unruly, maybe that was an issue. But you know, sometimes just dealing with a horse like, hey, we'll just drop him down. Hopefully, we can get it done. But uh, showed a little bit more life. The Lasix on road to rail, long way. I like to finish against the lone lead, uh, lone speed there. Expect drama came back to run second behind MG Broker yesterday in Open Company. Uh, the question mark, the one and the twos, they are the speed. Uh, the ones first time gelded, reported here for Corrales, but you know, can they last? I don't know. I just don't like the giveaways here. Uh, I'll go elsewhere. I'll go the seven salute loot. I think this horse is going to come down off of the 12 to one morning line. I, I had this horse lined a little too high. Uh, showed a new dimension. Stumbled pretty bad last time out. Settled. Can he shine? A wire to wire winner. He came back to lead a long way next time out. I think salute loot. Uh, they found out that this horse can rate. He's going to be able to sit off of the one and the two and go on by. All right, uh, so the the one awesome agenda, first time gelding. This this horse uh, has to improve on the big drop uh, by awesome again for uh, Stronic Stable here and Jose Corrales. First time gelding. I hope that helps out yep. the one awesome agenda. Rosario Montanez gets aboard today. Yep. All right, so let's That's get a it. quick commercial break. Nice carryover in that rainbow pick six. That's almost 11,000. That starts race four. We'll check it out right after this. When it comes to getting back in the game, there's only one team to turn to. The team more high school, collegiate, and professional athletes train and recover with. That team is MedStar Sports Medicine. For more than 30 years, MedStar has served as a leader in the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of orthopedic and sports-related injuries. Ranked among the top programs in the Maryland and Washington regions, we offer rapid access to athletes of all levels. Let the pros who treat the pros treat you. MedStar Sports Medicine. Welcome back. Nice carryover in today's 20 cent rainbow pick six. Let's show you what we have. There it is. $10,908 starts in race four. My co-host in the afternoon, Tim Tullock, he has a ticket for it. Let's check it out and see how Tim's playing it today in the pick six. $64.80 play, affordable ticket there. He's three deep in the races four, five, six, seven. Race four, he goes with the four, six, ten. In the fifth race, that nice allowance race, he likes the one, two, seven. And there, race six, he goes with the one, seven, nine. Race seven, the one, five, eight. That's a wide open maiden ten going long there. In race seven, his single comes in race eight. That's a nice nickel starter allowance going a mile. He singles on the two. Watch my dust. That's my top pick there in race eight for trainer Claudio Gonzalez. Then race nine, he goes four deep. I don't blame him. That's also a <laughs> wide open. Nickel two life, Billy and Mayor is going six furlongs. He goes with the two, six, seven, eight. So there's his, uh, his ticket. You can study all of our tickets on the laurelpark.com website underneath the handicapping section. Race four also kicks off the middle pick four. So lots of action here in the fourth. We're going five and a half furlongs, claiming 5,000. Philly and Mayor is three and up, having won a race in six months. Never won four. That's the condition. You go with the two on top. Yeah. Let's start there. The two, Greeley Striker, six to one morning line. Nice price here on the two. I like the horse a little bit as well. Seven-year-old mare here for Laurie Testament. We have a video spotlight to show you of the race from February 9th. This was the first start in L Laurie's barn for Greeley Striker. Yeah, the number two horse this day broke a little bit slowly and is going to be rushed up in the contention. Unfortunately, is going to have to be shuffled back. We're going to watch it one more time, a little Slow break there, rushing up and then shuffling back early. This horse holds on pretty well. Uh, goes up into the pace right there. The speed, the four, the one go out for the lead. That's uh, 
Again, that's just old Sluzer out for the front to lessen. And also has to check pretty sharply there. Uh, you know, sometimes a rider maybe just take a hold early and try to make one run. This horse is a little bit keen. But I like this. The last three sixteenths of a mile really doesn't show any quit. This, this Merrill trying to come back actually works up in between horses through the final eighth of a mile. Closes a little bit of a ground. <coughs> excuse me, from the top of the stretch home, battling a little bit of cold. And uh, Greeley Striker today, I think, just needs to uh, come out a little bit sharper. You know, break a little cleaner and is going to be able to go up and uh, maybe not go wire to wire, but I think this horse that loves Laurel Park sure. can stalk and move by. Yeah, four-time winner here at Laurel Park. Runs her second start this year. I like her. I use her in my top four. She might get a little bit of a tough trip. The one stone supplier scratch. So Greeley Striker is going to break from the inside here. Uh, see if Chappie can uh, navigate a good trip. Chappie was another winner yesterday, right? I believe, I believe so. Yep, so he's been having a couple good weekends here at Laura Park. My price play of the day here, Kieran's going to be the favorite with McCarthy on his mare. The sixth Crystal Pier is going to be your favorite. I'll go with the second choice in here as my price play of the day, the 10 Big Mama. I think you like this mare last yes. out, and she, she's been in good form. Her last couple starts here at Laurel Park for trainer Wally Nielsen. Caramanos has been aboard a good second two starts ago. And then third last out, she was uh, a rank at the start and then a late move to finish third. Uh, hopefully she can uh, be uh, she can behave better today at the gate. Uh, she gets Caramanos again. I'll go with the 10 big okay. mama on top. Yeah, she's liking Laurel. She makes a run. She's been very consistent here and a big run last time after early trouble. All right. And uh, the six Crystal Pier, <coughs> we both pick against the favor here. <laughs> McCarthy on this mare coming off the long layoff for Kira McGee, a, a decent second against Open 4,000 at the Big T last August. Uh, the works at Pimlico, just okay. Kieran, he, he, he generally doesn't work his horses that fast in the morning. You wonder if they're trying to get, give her one, get her ready. She's protected with the waiver. Right. Uh, likes turf, but last time at Laurel, she ran a 56 on the dirt. Last dirt try, uh, that would win this race. All right, so a, a tricky beaten nickel there to kick off the pick six here in the fourth. Let's turn the page. Race five kicks off the late pick five. No carryover today in the late pick five. But as always, we have that industry low 12% takeout for you on both pick fives here at Laura Park. I couldn't find a single on the, on my late pick five ticket. It's kind of a pricey. Uh, let's check it out. It's kind of a pricey $64 ticket. Some wide open races here. Race five. I'll just go too deep. The seven one and done's my top pick with the one dirty foot. <coughs> Ran a big race last out uh, for Robbie Bale. So I go one seven here in race five. Uh, race six, that's a wide open nickel two life. Philly and Mare, six furlongs. I go with the two favorites in there, but they're nothing special. The, the seven, two carrots coming off. Uh, a little bit of a freshening here for Bobby Leaf. The nine, Angelina Starr has speed on the outside. Race seven, wow, good luck in that race. Maiden 10, three and up, going two turns. Big field, it's wide open. I go four deep there with the one, five, six, eight. The five's my, my, my top pick, seven pound apprentice. Got beat 10 lengths at this level, last out of, at Penn National. And that horse mm -hmm. is going to be one of the favorites gonna in the race. going to be one of the favorites. So I'm, I'm four deep there in race seven. Race eight, nickel starter going a mile. It's a nice race here. I, I like to two watch my dust, but look out for the four supervision with Trevor McCarthy. Gets back to a fast track today. Then another wide open nickel two life. Philly and Marriage, six furlongs in the finale. I go with the two, three, six, eight. Uh, the two, Sharon Stunder, uh, going to be uh, one of your favorites in there with a five pound apprentice, Grace Labar, aboard for Bill Kamlo. So a couple tricky wide open races here in this late pick five. Let's take a look here at the fifth race. Nice first level allowance condition, four and up, going six furlongs. This race, one of our features of the day here. And I have the seven on top, one and done. Let's start right there. We have a video spotlight to show you of the race, February 15th at this level. There he is, turning for home. In front by two, turning for home here. They went quick, 109 and three for the six furlongs. They finish up the seven furlongs in 22 and three. He just gets beat a neck. This is a real big effort. Now we cut back the six furlongs today. Yeah, that was the key. You look at the internals, the same day as Dirty Foot, definitely much quicker. Uh, battle with Calvi, who came back to win, just softened up just a little bit. Look at this, a tough, tough defeat here. Uh, should you know ran too good to lose there did one and yeah. done uh draws outside today again i think this horse might be the speed of the speed gonna have to deal though with dirty foot and corjan 
A, a dirty foot had to overcome the the rail post last out going six furlongs and well you see the comment line hemmed in on the turn finished a decent second uh, against allowance company draws a a tough rail post once again today now this horse has shown some early speeds gone to the front in, in a few races uh ha hasn't won uh the the maiden score sat off the pace early on and and ran a big effort last out uh, coming from off the pace. So I don't think Forrest wants to go to the front right away here on the one dirty foot, but she's going to need to get a good break and establish good early position. Yeah, she's got tactical speed, uh, you know, to use with dirty foot, and, and did have a little trouble too mid-stretch. Had a steady angle out and kept on coming. Uh, dirty foot ran a little quicker uh, than one and done. Now, granted, it has a little softer internals that day, but dirty foot, we found out one thing. Uh, sprinting is his game. Uh, that's what he wants to do. They tried him. At a mile, it was a little too much. Turning back in distance has been the key. Here's his, I, I like Corjon. I, I think the two is running against the right kind. I'm going to toss the route race, coming back to a sprint. It's three back race that I really like. A tough starter, $8,000 starter, whatever you want. He's come back to run 88 and 92 cents against killer stars. That was my brother Chubb right. up at Parks. I, I like Corjon. <laughs> coming back, uh, I, I think he can sit just inside, just off of it, try to find a little, little path from the quarter pole home. But. This horse back sprinting. This is what he wants. Yeah, he didn't want the mile last out. He didn't want the mud. He's 0 for 6 in the mud. So I think you're right. Just draw a line through that race. His two races, mm -hmm. his two wins before that, very sharp. He's a five-time winner here at Laura Park. So I like, uh, we like the same four. Well, yeah. I, I didn't use the six. Uh, they asked me about this horse on, on the radio earlier uh, mm -hmm. today. Darmaster coming off almost a two-year layoff today for trainer Mike Trombetta. Yeah, a little stat. Not not a huge sample, but over the last several years, I think it was, I, think, I, think I went back five years, two for five, three for five, with horses off between a, a year and two years off. Struth, he did it with Struth way back, I, I think it might have been 2016, similar off a 569-day layoff. So, uh, obviously, they still want to protect this horse. The works are forward. Uh, I think he was working with two swords, one of those works at the two-back race, and we saw two swords come back off a little bit of a break uh, to win and run the 80 buyer. So, Darn master, sneaky horse. You do not want to get beat by this horse in race five. And the first mm -hmm. time gelding today, five-year-old son of Bodie Meister. So an interesting allowance race there in race five to kick off the late pick five. Race uh, race six kicks off the late pick four, six furlongs. Philly Mares three and up. Never won two lifetime, claiming 5,000. Well, let's start with your top pick here. I like the price you, you have there on the one lolly, mm -hmm. 10 to one morning line for trainer Wayne Potts. Might have her line a little too high. I'll take five or six to one going back at it. I mean, all the money should come in on the seven and nine. Uh, but Angelina Starr, she had everything her own way last time. Still gave it up. Uh, the road's going to go through her. But Lolly, I, I think second time in the barn, a little shortening. She's shown the ability to go back to that race uh, back in November 2018 in New York when breaking the maiden was able to stalk and go by. I, I, I think she's got that ability, especially on the drop here for Potts. Potts is live today with a bunch of horses. Yeah, and you get a, a, a decent rider there with the, the five-pound apprentice, Kaimar Trotman. So I used the one in my top three. This this race is wide open. I hope you get a nice price on the one. I, I chalk it up with the two favorites yeah. on top. The 7-2 carat uh, is going to be your favorite in here. It gets a class relief coming off uh, over a three-month layoff. A couple nice works in January. Uh, but nothing recently, nothing since uh, late January. Jevion Salida will ride. Uh, it, she gets a nice class relief today, so uh, she finds a nice spot. But she, she, I, have her, I have her picked on top here, but on, on, on a deeper late pick five ticket, I think this is a spread race. Okay, yeah, she's been behind Angelina Starr a couple of races there. And, uh, and but uh, You're right about Angelina Starr. She's a big question mark she, going six for a long. She is. I mean, she had, I mean, she looked long gone last time and still backed up on the drop. Um, maybe two carats are a little bit better right now, freshened up. You, know, you yeah. might have a little better, you know, more sustained run at the six furlongs. All right, so we end up with the same four there in race six. Uh, race seven, what do you do here? Race seven kicks off the final pick oh, three geez, yeah. of the day. Here we're going a mile and a 16th. Maiden claiming 10,000, three and up, going a mile and a 16th. Okay, you have the eight on top. We both use the eight. We have a video spotlight. Let's start there with the eight eagle caviar here's the race at laurel from february 7th yeah you look at all these pps and none of these horses really have seen the lead in their races right i know eagle caviar has been in front rail was pretty good this day but this horse showed a lot of heart went to the front they came to him made another move back away and just couldn't quite hold on on against you know a dropping maynooth and maynooth finally broke the maiden there but uh, eagle caviar 
they went much too quick last time. I don't think he's going to have to deal with that kind of pace. I think he can kind of, if he can get away with maybe a 13 and, you know, 13 and 3, 14 and 2, somewhere like that, or a th three quarter call without much pressure, I think he can be gone in here. I, you, you have to use him because he get, gets a big number two starts ago, but the race last out, uh, just just stopped altogether. You, you wonder what Eagle Caviar you're going to get today. He's going to need some slow early fractions with Montanez aboard. I use him uh, third. If he gets loose on the lead, he could be dangerous here. My top pick, I'll go with the five, Escrow Finadilly. Five to two morning line here for trainer Carl Duran. You get the Sam Cardona, seven pound apprentice. Uh, Cardona with a win yesterday, yes. mm -hmm. right? They put the blinkers on this horse today. Hopefully that'll help. He ran a good second at Penn National against Maiden Five. He was exposed uh, against Maiden Five at Penn National last December. Hasn't run that well since then, but gets weight off today. The blinkers on. Yeah. Uh, that might sharpen him up a bit. Yeah. He may want to spread around in this race. It's hard <laughs> to find anything <laughs> to really love. I mean, too much time. The two, Amanda Rawlings, she has one spread the routes and has done okay. Second, you know, second time maiden star. I mean, second time for the maiden. It gets late six on. Hasn't been seen since Pimlico. But I, I think there's a couple route winners in the family. I think it could have protected this horse to two right off of that break. And yes means no. Really has no speed. Um but just, you know, gets in light, just might have to just ride the rail and right. hope everybody comes back, you know, to them. And it might happen in, in this group today. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, go uh, at the spread race there in race uh, seven. Go bomb hunting. Yeah. See if you can get a big blow-up price there in race seven. Let's turn the page. Race eight, nice feature. Uh, 5,000 starter allowance, three and up, going a mile. We kick off the late daily double here in race eight. I go with the two on top. Watch my dust for Claudio Gonzalez, Carlos Carrasco, We'll ride Carlos and Claudio, 35% together here in Maryland. This horse had a nice win against 8,000 starter allowance, going a mile in a slop late December. I was the first off the claim for Claudio. Big second up there at Parks late December. And then a decent third right here at Laurel at this, well, against Tougher, you, you could yeah. say, late January. And uh, uh, they, they didn't like, uh, didn't run too well last out. Whirling, curling, charge, and storm. That was a tough starter handicap race on February 18th. This race a little bit easier today for the yeah. two. Watch my dust. Yeah, it was hung very wide. We're making a little move into the stretch. Just couldn't quite keep going uh, in, in that gaudy field. Big field, 13 that day. We had Whirling, curling at a big price. Uh, yeah, he's supposed to kind of get by these, you would think. You know, look at the company lines. He, he's faced just tougher tougher starter company uh, you know, horses the last four or five starts there is some speed in here to target as well midnight cry will he try to do a federal walk for linda albert and go right to the front and go right. ahead and dictate he's going to have to deal with gorbachev city gold likes to go ahead and force the issue and young american is a horse he's tactical he won't be too far back i, I think young american going first time here for pots uh, his form has been consistent i i think he's going to get first run on the speed and maybe open up watch my dust he just has no speed will be too far back. I'm going to see if he can uh, reel in Young American. I think Young American gets the jump. He's going to have to hold off the two late. Well, second line, Sir Rockport last out. Sir Rockport just came back and Ran galloped. 82, yeah, galloped yesterday. The 82 buyer uh, yes, when he won, won uh -huh. the opener yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, all right, the set, well, the eight Young Americans should get a nice trip, forwardly placed from the outside. The four here, supervision, gets Trevor McCarthy to ride. This horse, a real big effort two starts ago. He was running out of condition against Nickel Five Life. He galloped that day by seven and a half with a big 73 buyer and uh, stepped up to 8,000 starter allowance last out late February, going a mile in the mud. He's 0 for 7 on an off track, and he ran an okay fourth. He ran his, <coughs> he ran his uh, lifetime best on an off track last out with a 70 buyer when he finished fourth behind sure. Federal Walk. So maybe a little easier spot today. McCarthy back aboard, and he gets back to a fast track today for the four supervision. Yeah, we're trying to figure out where that race came from two races back. Right. But he ran pretty comparable number, a 70 next time out on a, on a muddy seal surface, coming back to a fast track. Maybe that'll uh, move him up even a little bit more. Sneaky horse in here. I don't have him in the top four, but uh, Bobby the Brain, I kept looking at this horse, this Ness horse. Why are you protecting him? You know, he ran so bad last time. Broke slowly. Go back on the page. His numbers work. He might be a horse to use underneath. All right, at a big price there, yeah. the three, Bobby the Brain. So, nice yeah. starter allowance there to kick off the late daily double. Race nine, it's a tough race here. Race nine, claiming 5,000, two life Philly mares, three and up, six furlongs. And your favorite in this race is going to be a five-pound apprentice here, 
the, uh, the two, Sharon Stunder gets Grace Labar to ride for uh, Bill Comlo. She has no early speed. She just comes rallying late. She finished second last out at 38-1. to one. She's not going to be 38-1 to one today. No. You have her on top as well. Can the bug girl do it here on the two, Sharon Stunder? We're rooting for her. Well, we know we're going to be well back early. This horse has no speed right. whatsoever. But that was a lone speed that day with Angeline Starr. It dropped, you know, came back to the field. Sharon Stunder just kind of ran her race, but unfortunately got in pretty bad through the stretch. So that, that, that's big. You know, right. Lamar, be careful there. <laughs> Turn her for home. You know, this horse likes to lay in. Uh, the threes, you look at this horse, you're like, ah, could you like this horse off since November of 17, right? Wow. Really, he's only run one poor race on the dirt, and there is no speed in this race. None of, none of these Phillies or mares have any kind of early gas. Uh, this horse is fresh. A couple decent works at Folk Farm. I looked that up. Folk Farm, I didn't know where – you know where that is? I, Folk I, Farm? No, yeah. I haven't heard yeah. of that. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Ty's life, Estina is just going to probably try to nurse with this one around the track and try to take him gate to wire. All right, yeah, Ty Live Christina, she came through for me in, in the finale last Friday on, on a decent price. So, yeah, this horse comes off a long layoff to three in the ray. You have to use a little bit here. So, yeah. all right, we like the same four horses there in the finale. Go as deep as you can there in race nine. That's it. We're out of time. Nice carry over in that pick six. It's almost 11,000. That starts in race four. Good luck today. Dave Robin, he's coming up next with today's scratches and changes. Good luck Thank on you. Uh, your early pick four today. You got it. Thanks, Stan. Good luck.